of the ultra violent world of drugs because she was the baddest of the bad and she was a ever heard of the black widow or cocaine godmother Griselda Blanco was one of the deadliest women of all time and an infamous name in the cartel industry what is her backstory what made her into the queen of narco trafficking how did she meet her end watch until the end to learn everything about one of the most feared female criminals to ever exist before we begin, kindly hit the like button and subscribe for more amazing content like the one you're about to watch. What's Griselda Blanco's backstory? Griselda Blanco Restrepo was born on February 15, 1943 in Cartagena, Bolivar, Colombia. She was born to Ana Lucia Restrepo and Fernando Blanco, though raised by her mother. Blanco was a Colombian drug lord associated with the Medellin cartel. She is also known as La Madrina, La Dama de la Mafia, Lady of the Mafia, the Black Widow, the Cocaine Godmother, and the Queen of Narco Trafficking. La Madrina started her criminal life at the early age of nine. She became a contributor to the drug trade between Colombia and the United States in the 1970s through to the early 2000s. Griselda Blanco was also a pioneer in the Miami-based cocaine drug trade and drug war violence during the 1980s through the early 2000s. Blanco was a ruthless drug lord who built a multi-billion dollar drug trafficking empire as she became the first ever billionaire female criminal. The Colombian and U.S. federal authorities ruled her responsible for up to 2,000 murders during her drug trade involving Colombia, Miami, New York, and South California. She was indicted in the U.S. on federal drug conspiracy charges with 30 of her subordinates in April 1975. However, she fled to Colombia before she was arrested. Blanco returned to Miami in the late 1970s and became a center figure in the drug-related violence known as the Miami Drug War. Also known as the Cocaine Cowboy Wars, this violence occurred in Miami in the late 1970s and early 1980s. Blanco was more than willing to use violence against her rivals in the drug trade and those who stood against her business. Many murders were said to have been ordered by Blanco during this war, leading to federal investigations and a clampdown in Miami. Blanco fled to California in 1984 due to fear of being killed. There were many assassination orders for her from rival cartels and gangs. She was arrested by cops in her home and held with full bail on February 18, 1985. She was sentenced to almost 20 years in prison, though tried to escape. She served her sentence before being released and deported back to Colombia. Blanco had four spouses, namely Zulma Andino Trujillo, Alberto Bravo, Dario Sepulveda and Charles Cosby. She had three sons with her first husband, Andino Trujillo. All her sons were killed after her deportation to Colombia. Her second husband, Alberto Bravo, was the one who introduced Blanco into the world of cocaine trafficking. She earned the name Black Widow after she successfully killed him in a shootout. Her third husband, with whom she had her only surviving son, Michael Corleone Blanco, is Dario Sepulveda. There are reports that she gave an order to have him assassinated when he started a custody battle for their son. Her fourth husband, Charles Cosby, is the only surviving spouse. Blanco has reportedly retired from the life of crime after being deported to Colombia. However, she was shot and killed on September 3, 2012 in Medellin, Antioquia, Colombia. The queen of narco trafficking was one of the richest and most dangerous women in the world. Her net worth as of 2012 was an estimated 2 billion US dollars. She earned the title of the most powerful drug kingpin of her time during her peak. What made her join the drug industry? Zelda Blanco has a history of crime from her early years. Though she was born in Cartagena, there are reports that she was baptized in Santa Marta. At age three, Blanco moved to Medellin with her mother, which kick-started her criminal life. At the age of nine, Blanco ran away from home to escape the sexual assaults of her mother's boyfriend. At age 11, Blanco helped kidnap and eventually kill the child. Her former spouse, Charles Cosby, recounted how she kidnapped the boy, asked for ransom from his family, and shot him when his family refused to pay. She was said to have shot him from an upscale flatland neighborhood near her neighborhood. Blanco's early criminal life also involved pickpocketing before age 13, looting and alleged prostitution until age 20. She was said to have married a small-time criminal, Andino Trujillo, and they had three sons. The couple subsequently got divorced and Blanco was said to have ordered his death several years later. In the early 1970s, Blanco met Alberto Bravo, a drug trafficker whom she later married. 
Bravo introduced Blanco to the world of the cocaine trade, and they became business partners. They migrated illegally to the United States to establish their cocaine business in New York. Blanco fled New York to escape indictment, moved to Colombia, and returned to Miami in the late 1970s. Settling in Miami, she built and ran a drug trafficking empire that earned her multi-billion dollars. Blanco may have joined the drug industry in her late 20s, however, her flair for crime started in her early childhood. Being raised in a community with criminal affinity, a victim of sexual crime and poverty laid the foundation for Blanco's involvement in the drug world. What was her experience as a drug lord? Griselda Blanco earned the nickname Queen of Narco Trafficking, and it was for obvious reasons. After her marriage to Alberto Bravo in the early 1970s, the couple illegally migrated to Queens, New York. They established a sizable cocaine business there as their base and started infiltrating the United States. Blanco's creativity was vital in the success of their extensive and high operation. She notably had lingerie with secret compartments made to smuggle drugs into the United States. In 1975, there was an indictment on Blanco for drug conspiracy charges, which she fled from avoiding capture. She later returned to Miami in the late 1970s. She also killed her husband and business partner, Alberto Bravo, in a shootout later that same year. Blanco got reports there were millions of dollars missing from the profits of the cartel they had built together. She traced the missing money to her husband, whom she believed had stolen it. In a Bogota nightclub parking lot, Blanco confronted her husband, which led to an exchange of arms. According to the Guardian reports, Blanco, then 32, pulled out a pistol. Bravo responded by producing an Uzi submachine gun, and after a blazing gun battle, he and six bodyguards lay dead. Blanco, who suffered only a minor gunshot wound to the stomach, recovered and soon afterwards moved to Miami, where her body count and reputation for ruthlessness continued to climb. After her husband's death, Blanco earned the alias Black Widow. The Black Widow returned to Miami to continue her drug business in the late 1970s. She did this on a large scale and earned the nickname Godmother of Cocaine. Her return to the U.S. from Colombia coincided with the era of public violent conflicts that swept the city of Miami in the 1980s. The conflicts involved hundreds of murders and killings yearly, which Blanco was said to have pioneered. In a bid to eliminate her competition, she displayed a brazen ruthlessness that led to the high crime epidemic in Miami. This epidemic was named the Miami Drug Wars or Cocaine Cowboy Wars. She was said to have invented the mode in which these murders occurred, gunmen on motorcycles who operated at any given time, including broad daylights. A notable violent event was a shootout in broad daylight at a local mall in 1979. Blanco's drug trade during this era was fueled by her cunning and creative nature and her brazen violent streak. According to reports, Blanco smuggled more than three tons of cocaine into the U.S. annually, bringing in about $80 million a month. Her drug trade became so successful as she became the first ever female criminal billionaire. The money was spent on her luxurious lifestyle, which included hedonistic parties and luxury homes. Blanco's violent reign as a drug kingpin in Miami brought about federal government scrutiny in South Florida. A central tactical unit, a joint operation between Miami-Dade Police Department and the DEA anti-drug operation, clamped down on Blanco's cartel and her violent operations. This led to the demise of her organization and the freewheeling, high-profile Miami drug scene of those times later. Blanco's violent operations also led to repeated attempts at her assassination. For fear of being killed, she escaped to California in 1984. However, in 1985, she was arrested and taken back to New York, where she was tried and sentenced to prison. After being found guilty, she served a maximum sentence of 15 years. There are reports that despite her incarceration, Blanco continued to run her drug trafficking empire. Also, the authorities continued to press additional charges against Blanco, especially those involving the murders of about 200 people. In 1984, one of Blanco's hitmen, Jorge Ayala, brought evidence used to indict her for three murders. However, the case collapsed due to technicalities relating to a phone sex scandal between the witness and female secretaries in the district attorney's office. In 1998, Blanco pleaded guilty in exchange for a reduced sentence. In 2002, she suffered a heart attack while in prison. In 2004, she was released from prison and deported to Medellin, Colombia. She was last sighted in May 2007 at the Bogota airport after reportedly retiring from crime. How did the reign of the queen of narco-trafficking end? Griselda Blanco was murdered on the night of September 3, 2012. She died after being shot twice, once in the head and once in the shoulder, by a motorcyclist in Medellin, Colombia. 
She died at a butcher shop on the corner of 29th Street after having bought $150 worth of meat. The middle-aged gunman climbed off the back of a motorcycle outside the shop, entered, pulled out a gun, and shot Blanco two times before calmly walking back to his bike and disappearing into the city. She died at the age of 69 by the same method many of her victims suffered. Griselda Blanco's legacy exists in many movies and books, including Cocaine Cowboys in 2006 and Cocaine Cowboys 2, Hustlin' with the Godmother in 2008. What are your thoughts on the life of this queen of narco-trafficking? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. Did you enjoy the video? Like and comment below. Do not forget to subscribe and follow us on Twitter and Instagram. You will find our social media handles in the description below.